We didn't always have title insurance. Title insurance is relatively modern. So I'm going to explain the problem that happened that created the need for title insurance. Okay? So you got to remember that they had a name for the guys that used to own all, all the property. These rich guys owned huge tracts of property. They were called land barons. Okay? And those guys were shady. They were like worse than used car salesmen. Okay, so let me tell you what would happen. So Landon's a land baron. Okay, and he owns this huge tract of land, 2,000 acres. Okay, and he sells this bottom piece to Vanessa. So he sells the bottom 200 feet to Vanessa. With the grant deed. Okay, then he comes over here and he sells Danny. Okay, he sells, off, he sells off everything else, and the last piece he's got is this piece right here. Okay, which is this 200 feet. Hmm. Not counting the piece he already sold to Vanessa. Okay, but he, he, he's a drunk, and he forgets that he sold this little piece down here to Vanessa, right? And he's too cheap to get a survey, so when he goes to sell to Danny, he sells Danny the east 200 feet. Okay, so Danny gets the east 200 feet. Now, it just so happens to be that most of this is swamp, and the only dry place to put a house is down here. Okay, and when the guy sold it to Danny, he came out here, and Vanessa's house is over here. Okay, and there's a dense forest right here, so she never even sees this part of the property. Okay, so when the guy, when Landon comes out, the land baron, and sells Danny, he actually walks the strip with him. And he says, yeah, Danny, you know this is all swamp, but there's a beautiful place to put a house right here. It's nice and dry, and you got a good view of the lake. Danny says, great. So he buys it. I give him a grant deed. Both of you guys have a grant deed. Okay, now, Vanessa's driving down the road to go home one night after clubbing, and she sees that there's a concrete truck over here ready to pour concrete. Okay? And she says, what the heck? That's my property. Okay, so she... Runs over here with her baseball bat, right? And she threatens Danny. She says, you're on my land. And Danny says, no, I'm not. I got a grant deed for this. It includes this. Maybe Danny even got a survey. Danny gives his grant deed to the surveyor. The surveyor comes out and says, yep, marks the corners. Okay? So what Vanessa's going to do in that situation, okay, or Danny, either one of you, okay, if you've got a grant deed for me, what do you do to fix it? Uh, the cleanup line. No. There's a dispute over who owns this. Nobody's cleaning anything up yet. Yeah, quit. You Can think you own it. it? No, no quick claim. You think you own it. Danny wants to put a house on it. He's got to buy it from me. Okay, but he thinks he oh, owns it. Oh, shoot. Okay, so let's say, so here's what <laughs> Vanessa does, because this is kind of chick she is. She calls up her three cousins, okay, and they camp out here with shotguns, okay? And they said, Danny, if you step foot over this line right here, we're going to shoot you dead. This actually happened in the Old West. This kind of thing happened. So Danny's like, oh, great. He says, I don't want to get shot, right? And Danny's a big chicken. We all know that, right? So he ain't going to cause no problem. So he's like, all I got left is a piece of swamp land. So Danny, what are you going to do? Sue. You're going to sue. Who's he going to sue? Pete. Oh. No. Who gave him the grand deed? Ah. Oh. You haven't made him any promises. Who made him a promise? You did. I did. He's got a grand deed for me. Okay? So Danny sues me because I gave him a grand deed, as he should. Okay? Okay, but here's the problem with grant deeds. This is why we came up with title insurance. Danny sues me and says, hey, you sold me a piece of junk piece of property that I can't build a house on with a bad grant deed, and I want my money back, plus some money for my pain and suffering I got threatened with a shotgun. Okay, plus I already put a foundation out here. They were ready to pour concrete. So I want my purchase price plus 20%. And he goes to court, and the judge says, yep, Landon's a crook, drops a gamble, gravel, says, Landon, pay Danny the money. Now, what Danny doesn't know is I'm a drunk, and so what have I done with all the money I've made from all, selling all that land? I've spent it on prostitutes and booze. You yeah, remember, this is the Old West, right? Okay, so even though Danny is right and he got a legal judgment, what do you get out of a bankrupt man? Nothing. Now here's the real problem. It's not even Danny that came up with title insurance. What did Danny need to get to buy this property? He didn't have the money, so what did he have to go get? A loan. He had to go get a loan from a bank. Okay? And they have those in the Old West. 
So, Danny says, man, I can't get any money out of Landon. He's a broke drunk. Okay? Vanessa's going to shoot me if I try and go on my piece of property where I want to build my house. All I got left is a piece of worthless swamp. And he's making payments on it to the bank. So if you were Danny in that situation, Danny, what do you do? Sell. You can't sell it. Who's going to buy it? You give it up. You walk away. Stop paying. You stop paying. So who's left holding the back? <clears throat> the lender. The bank. So guess what? The grant deed is only as good as the guy that gave it to you. Right? And does the bank know half the time? you got to remember most of these land barons so why were... why was the bank giving a loan without... Because they didn't have a better system. Okay. So what does the bank... So the bank's on the hook for the money, right? Okay, so here's how it used to work before they had title insurance. When they would go, when you, Danny would go to the bank to get a loan, okay, the bank would make him hire an attorney, and there were special attorneys. And their whole job was to go back and look at all the deeds to make sure that Landon hadn't double sold this piece of property. Okay, and that was called an abstract of title, or a chain of title. Okay? And you would go and you would pay an attorney. And there were guys, they only worked in one or two counties, and every time somebody bought or sold a piece of property, they would chase every deed all the way back to the patent from the government on every piece of property. We still do that sometimes, but only when things have really gone sideways. Okay, now, that's a beautiful system. It works really good, except how much does it cost to have an attorney run a chain of title on a property every time a property sells? It's expensive, thousands and thousands of dollars. So some really smart guys were sitting around a room one day, right? The guy from the bank, a couple bankers were sitting around, Okay, it wasn't a surveyor, because surveyors aren't this smart. A couple bankers were sitting around and said, you know, this really sucks. I just got stuck with this worthless piece of swampland property, and I'm tired of paying that attorney a bunch of money. You know, sometimes the attorneys would miss something, too. It wasn't perfect. So they said, you know what, let's come up with a way, let's just, let's come up with a way to, to insure this. Validate, yeah. We're going to come up with insurance. So they came up with insurance, okay? And so here's what they figured. They said, hey, look. 99 out of 100 deals are going to be fine. It's the one deal out of 100 that goes sideways. So here's what we're going to do. Instead of spending all this money, instead of spending 10 grand on an attorney for an abstract of title every time we sell a piece of property, we're going to charge everybody a thousand bucks. Okay? And so look, if 99 of your deals go good at a thousand bucks a pop, how much money do you have? 99K. Okay, now, you got one deal that goes bad, and that's property's worth 10 k So you end up eating a $10,000 property. Okay? So 99 k is what you charge. You spent 10 k What are you left with? You made 89 k and you never had to give a lawyer a nickel. So title insurance is just a way to collect money from everybody so the good deals pay for the occasional bad deal. It's insurance, just like your car insurance. The good drivers pay for the bad, right? Okay, but the beauty of this system is you gotta spend 10 grand and wait two months every time you wanna buy or sell a piece of property. You gotta wait for the attorney to give you an abstract? No. Okay, but here's what I want you to remember, this is what people forget. Title insurance is insurance. That's what it is. It's not a guarantee. It's not, it's all it is is it's insurance. Somebody's giving you a piece of insurance that says, if we, if we find out that Landon doesn't really own this house he's selling you, we'll fix it. That's what it is. It's insurance on the ownership of property. Okay, it's a really smart system. Some smart guys came up with it. Okay, but here's, there's, now there's some problems with this system. Okay, it used to be, and I've written some articles about this, I'll, I'll send you guys links. It used to be that title insurance was a really good product. So every title company had what they call a local title plant. They knew the local land history, and they did a good job, okay? What's happened in the last 10 years is a lot of that work has been outsourced to places like the Philippines, okay? And so the quality of title insurance has just gone down, okay? And so we find a lot more problems than we used to. So your title insurance isn't as good as it used to be. I wouldn't even, even have paid title insurance for this house if they hadn't made me. The bank made me. Because what do I know about a lot of title insurance? What's it worth? Zero. Not worth much, okay? There's good title companies, but it's like, look, it's like going to get car insurance, right? You go and you pay for car insurance. When you buy car insurance, there's a list of exclusions from your policy, right? It's like buying car insurance that covers almost nothing by the time you're done with the exclusions. That's what title insurance is. 
Like, the chances of a title insurance company actually paying on a claim is pretty slim. It's 1% or less. Okay? But you pay for it because the bank makes you. Because, listen, the bank just wants a fail-safe. If things go really sideways, they want somebody to sue. Okay? But you said the title company won't pay out. Well, but so then the bank sues the title company. Because they were the ones that said it was all good. Okay, now here's the difference between the title company and the drunk that sold you the property. Is the banks make sure the title company has what? Money. Title insurance companies have money, the banks make sure. So you can sue a title company and get something out. Isn't the whole point of the title company to be sure that the, the property is ownership of that person? So they do, they do make some effort to do that because they're on the hook. Okay. Okay. But is it is the is the title system perfect? No. No, it's very complicated. So things go sideways sometimes. So the title the title company isn't to prevent the drunk from selling the same. It is to some extent. It's insurance when that goes bad. Okay. But there's you're saying that that can still slip. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. I got insurance on I got insurance on my Dodge, right? Car insurance. Okay. So let's say Danny and I are driving to L.A. for. For, uh, we're going to go to L.A., we're going to go hang out on the beach, okay? And we're driving down, and I get tired. So I pull over to a rest stop. I say, hey, Danny, can you drive a couple hours? Dave says, sure. He jumps in, right? And we get in a car accident on I-5. And I call my insurance company, and I say, hey, I got a wreck. I need you to fix this truck. And they say, uh-uh, Danny was driving. Danny's not covered. Maybe Danny's got a DUI on his record, okay? Hmm. So... I call my bank now, so now, now, so I stopped making payments on a truck I can't drive, right? $600 a month, I can't drive it, so I stopped making payments on it, okay? So the bank called me and says, why'd you stop making payments? I said, Danny wrecked my truck and the insurance company won't cover it. The bank says, okay, so they go and they sue my insurance company, okay? And the bank says, you told us you were going to insure this truck. And the bank says, yeah, but we didn't say we would insure it for Danny driving. And the bank says, well, that's not what your contract said. Now the bank's attorney and the insurance attorney are fighting over whether or not that's a covered claim. That kind of crap happens all the time. So just because you have insurance, does that always mean the insurance company is going to pay the claim? No. No. So the banks and the insurance companies sue each other. Mm. Okay? All right. And it gets even better because the banks got tired of suing the title companies, and so they found a way to sue the surveyor instead, which we'll get to. Okay? All right. So when you go to buy title insurance, they give you a policy. Just like when you buy car insurance, and there's a whole list of things they don't cover. Okay, and Danny, what is that insurance policy called? There's a special name for it. Uh, liability? No. Land title insurance? That's what they should call it. They should call it land title insurance, but it's called land title report. 